Yeah. How are you doing this evening? Very well. Good. Happy to be here. Yes. Very good response. <laughs> and welcome to the practice group. So today we're going to be doing the presuppositions of NLP um, because these are something that do kind of underpin NLP and are something that sometimes are just kind of skated over um, at times. So they're actually very important things. And can anyone tell me what a presupposition of NLP? So we're not talking about the linguistic presuppositions, we're talking about the actual presuppositions of NLP. Can anyone tell me what the concept of that is? A specific presupposition or what it is? No, the, the actual presupposition. So for example, no failure, any feedback. No, no such thing as an unresourceful person, just an unresourceful state. Lovely, that's an example of one, brilliant. So in terms of um, presuppositions of NLP, they are assumed truths. So if we kind of work that they are, if we sort of have them as principles of truth, then they help us with a kind of a lever for change. So if we assume, for example, if you're working with a client and you assume, um, which, sorry, which is the one that you use, there's no resourceful... Unresourceful states. That's it. So there's no unresourceful person, just unresourceful states. So if you come from that angle when you're working with someone, you can see that, that could have quite a difference to, to how you're sort of working with them, um, as a, rather as opposed to thinking, well, actually, there's nothing they can do about it and they're, they're stuck. So we're going to go through the presuppositions of NLP. Okay, and we're just going to work through them all, and then what we're going to do is have a, a nice little exercise, which you're then going to go away and practice. Okay, so, first one. The map is not the territory. Can anyone explain that to me, please? Yes. So, um, the territory can very well be bigger than the map. The map is that person's probably point of view, but there's this whole other world outside that map. Okay, yeah. Um, yeah, so how would you, what would be the territory? How would you describe the territory? Along those lines. Uh, good one. <coughs> Sorry. That's, that's a good one. <laughs> it is a good one. I'm not sure how to describe that. Uh, Can anyone just? Your, your reality is not reality as it is. It's just how you see it, and others see it from a different reality. Yeah, exactly. So the territory is reality, whatever that actually is. And if you even think about it with the with the territory in itself, and if you think about the communication model and the information that comes in and our neurological filters, our F1 filters. So for example, there's certain sounds that we can't hear, and there's certain light waves that we can't see. So even, even in that sense, the territory is already slightly limited. And then of course we have our F2 filters, our linguistic map gets filtered again, um, and then it becomes our map of the world, which is our map and it's not the territory. So territory is reality as a whole, as much of a reality as that is. And then our map is our own personal. Come in. Hello. And then our map is our own sort of personal view and map of the world. Welcome. So we've just covered the map is not the territory. Right. Leading on from that, why is that important to understand that the map is not the territory, do we think? Yeah, exactly. Ash, yeah. And um, also that your map doesn't cover the entire territory. So that there are areas outside of your map that are unknown to you. Yeah, exactly. Which leads us beautifully into the next one. Respect for other people's map of the world. So leading on from that point, does anyone want to explain what this one means? You kind of you kind of already said it between the two of you. Anyone want to elaborate on that for me? The other person's map is their reality. It may not be the same as yours, but you, you need to respect the fact that they have different views from you. And um, you, you need to um, be aware that you can't be seeing the same thing as they are, but necessarily you might, if you don't get a little bit of information about that map, you, mm -hmm. you might be going on a different tangent. Yeah, exactly, in terms of your communication. And why is it important, it, it, what you were just saying there, about understanding that people have different maps of the world, why would that be important, especially if you're working one-to-one -one with someone? You can maybe understand why they're doing certain things and behaving in certain ways if you understand a bit better where they're coming from a different angle. 
Yeah, exactly. And also when you're working with someone, I mean, whose map of the world would you be working with? Theirs. Theirs, exactly. So if you understand their map of the world, then you can work with them exactly as you say. You can work much more effectively with them in order to get change or to facilitate them to find their own change. If you're coming from your map of the world, then really what are you doing, really? So it's behaviour and change is to be evaluated in terms of the context and ecology. So always before you start working, if you're working one-to-one -one with somebody, whether it's a client, whether it's a friend, whoever you're working with, just do an ecology check beforehand. Ah, one of my favourites. There's no failure, only feedback. OK, who wants to explain this one to me? It's going to be a difficult one, but... If someone sets out to do something and they haven't realised what they were set out to do and they feel mm -hmm. this failure, it's not necessary to be looked upon as that they failed, they just haven't reached that point yet, but in the meantime they've made a good step forward already. Yeah, that's so a lovely way to put it. Yeah. You can take a, you know, the attempt and where it's gone wrong, you can review that and take that with you in the next attempt maybe and therefore it's it's the feedback that you use. Hmm. It's like a circle, continuous improvement, I think, always. With yeah, like, like a learning cycle, really, yeah. like a feedback loop. Yeah, yeah I mean, it, how powerful would it be to think of, if you feel you failed at something, to actually think, well, I haven't quite got to the success yet. And actually, if I look back and I feed back to myself, um, what is it that stops me getting to that point up till now? And if you can change that, and then you're already on your way to success. You're already on that pathway anyway. So it's what tweaks do you make? For example, could it be limiting beliefs that are holding you back? Is that something that you can notice? Is it um, maybe you're falling back into an old pattern? Do you run certain patterns that stop you sort of going forward to your success? So it's looking at this and feedback. So people have all the ability they need. There are no unresourceful people, only unresourceful states. Who would like to elaborate on this for me? Ian. <laughs> Last week, what popped to mind. Mm. Um, your own states can impact how you actually deal with a situation in person and environment. And yeah. Knowing that you can manage your own states empowers you to be able to deal with that problem and not be impacted by external forces. Yeah, exactly. There's also, yes, there's, there's being at cause is in there as well. There's state choice. Ever been in a situation where actually all this other stuff just takes over and you go into a state which really isn't very helpful? I know I have. Uh, and how effective is it to be able to, to maintain your state or change your state? And the idea here is that we have everything within us that we need. If you think about your unconscious and the information that it takes in, since you were born, it's taking in everything you've ever seen, everything you've ever experienced. And if you can be resourceful in one situation, then there's absolutely no reason, if you're in a certain context, that you can't take that across into another context. Now, some people may find that difficult to sort of get their head around, but as NRP practitioners and master practitioners, I'm sure you're practicing it all the time. Right, the person or system with the greatest flexibility of will will control the system. Anyone? Options. Yeah, choice. Choice, that's it. Options and choice. Okay, yeah, exactly. So this is going to link into um, another one that will come to as well. But basically, it's the, the more flexible you are, the more likely you are to succeed. Okay, if you think about the three pillars of NLP, so it's know your outcome, have excellent sensor acuity, so you know whether you're, work, you're going towards your goal or away from your goal, and have flexibility. I'm sure you've heard lots of times before, if you always did what you always did, do. Oh. That's right, yeah. <laughs> I know what you mean, though. Yeah, if, if, you always did what you, if you always do what you always did, you always get what you always got. So if you're rigid, Something, it's not going to change. If you're doing the same thing over and over and over again, then you're going to get the same results over and over and over again. If you can have that flexibility and if you can build that in, then you're much more likely to get towards your goal. And again, it gives you more choices and more options. Right, the words that we use are not the event or the item they represent. So the words we use are not the event or the item they represent. Yeah, 
that kind of come into the territory. So if you um, think of the communication model again, and the lovely drawing of the face, and how all the information comes into the F FA. Yeah, so all the VACOGs, so the visual, auditory, kinesthetic, olfactory, gustatory, yep, all comes in through into the FA, which is first access. Yep. And that's sort of the best ex sort of level of experience or, or the most we can get after it comes to our neurological filters. Um, and then we start filtering that. <coughs> so, for example, do you remember from... Do you remember from your practitioner course, or masters, but we tend to do this at practitioner, um, where Steve will ask somebody to think about their wedding day? Or, or an experience that they've had that means an awful lot to them. And they'll start describing it. And actually the difference between the, the feeling or you know, sort of the experience and actually how they are then sort of speaking out that experience, the, the huge gap between that. Yep, so our words are not the event or the item that they represent. Hello. Okay. Which is lovely, which takes me on to the meaning of communication is a response it elicits. Who would like to elaborate on that one? So what you're saying, what you're intending to convey, mm -hmm might not come across at all as what you're intending and what's ultimately come as the meaning is what the other person has understood. Perfect definition. Yeah. Thank you very much. Yeah, fantastic definition. For example, we tend to judge ourselves by our intentions and we judge others by their actions. So I don't know if you've been in a situation where you've been talking to someone and they take what you're saying the wrong way and you're thinking, well, I, that's not what I meant. That's not how I, I kind of took it. Why do they, do they not understand? That's not what I meant. But they may say something back to you or they may do something in a certain way and you're kind of thinking, well, why, why are they being like that? And they may say to you, well, that's not what I meant. That wasn't my intention. Like, it doesn't matter because that's not what you did. So you see how powerful it can be. And also in terms of we cannot not communicate. So if you're thinking of what you're giving out and you're thinking of your non-verbal communication as well, that's just something to be very aware of when you are actually talking to somebody. It's not just what you're saying, it's the way that you're saying it. And you need to sort of understand, again, this is to do with calibration, Ash was talking about calibration earlier, and again, like a baseline. If you, if you sort of find that there's a shift or you see a shift, then don't assume you know what they're thinking, but then you can start exploring it. Yep, makes sense? Mona. Total sense. Total sense. <laughs> Good. Something I'm very aware of since I lost my voice is just the way you communicate with that voice. Yeah. So in case nobody caught that, this is what Mona has learned <laughs> since she lost her voice. That it's the way you communicate without having a voice and, and how people are coming across. Okay, so that makes perfect sense to you. Okay, lovely. So all procedures should increase wholeness and choice. Anyone? We were talking about choice. It was used to be, wasn't it, talking about choice yes. in terms of flexibility. Yes. So? Yeah, so all the, so all the procedures that you do with somebody else, yeah. um, the end goal needs to be that you're increasing um, their, their choice of flexibility mm -hmm. and also it needs to be fit in with everything else, so the wholeness, so if you do something, a procedure with somebody, it should have a positive impact on everything else that okay. it interfaces with them. So we're sort of talking about the ecology as, as yeah. well. Yep, exactly. Um, and also in terms of um, increasing wholeness and choice, again, thinking about the map. If you have a very small map, then in theory you're going to have quite a small amount of choices. The bigger the map, the more choices that you're going to have. Would you all agree with that? Yeah, and if you're thinking about the communication model again, and you're thinking about the, this is, this is how I kind of do it in my head, so the experience all comes in, so it comes in and you have the experience up here, and then it gradually just kind of goes like this, so it goes through your first sort of F2 filters, your deletion, generalisation, distortion, life experience, all, all those F2 filters, comes through then to the linguistic map where you add language to make sense of it, goes back through again to some more F2 filters and it just so it starts off here and it gradually just gets smaller, 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 smaller. When you do things like the meta model or you start talking to people and start blowing out limiting beliefs, then you start coming back up towards 
the original experience. So you start off here, you come down here, you start working with somebody, you start taking them up, and this just opens back up again. So if you think of it like a funnel, opens back up, gives you more choice. And if NLP is about anything, it's about choice. Thank you very much. Okay, so we've kind of almost covered this one already. Um, people respond to their map of the world, not reality. Again, what, what is reality? Yep, is everyone happy with that one? <coughs> yep, okay. And again, this is just to sort of talk about, you know, I don't, if you're working with somebody as a coach, you know, I don't know you. My Virginia Satir, I don't know you. Teach me about you. Yep. Milton Erickson, when people used to come and see him, and Robert Diltz was saying, well, you know, if I do this process, would that work with this person? And Milton Erickson used to say, I don't know, but I'd be very interested to find out. And then another, another person coming in, well, if this person had this problem, could I use this process? Again, I don't know, I'd be very interested to find out. You have to take each person that you're dealing with, whether that's in day-to-day -day life, whether it's in a coaching situation, whatever it is, work, you have to take each person um, as their own, as their complete identity, you know, entity within themselves, um, and then find out about them. Yep. Okay. Right, so this is always an interesting one. Behaviour is geared for adaptation. Current behaviour is the best choice currently available. This is an interesting one. There are no resistant clients, only flexible communicators. Resistance is a sign of a lack of rapport. Who agrees with this one? <laughs> yep. Okay, so you can always build rapport with somebody. Might be quite difficult with some people more than others. Some people can be very natural. You can just go into a situation and you automatically have rapport. You may find that you were doing that for a long time before you came to NLP. Um, but then there may have been times that actually that didn't happen. Does anyone recognise that? Does anybody recognise the kind of thoughts, well, what was happening there? Why didn't that work? They don't like me. Why didn't that work? Anyone can find that familiar? Yeah, <laughs> lots of nods. Okay, so it's, and rapport is not about being liked. That's the thing I think is the most important thing to realise. It's not about being liked. What's the definition of rapport? Um, I'm conscious that there's something that I'm unconscious. Almost there, unconscious. Can anyone else help speak? Sorry? Sorry? No. Sorry. Connection. <laughs> unconscious responsiveness. Yes, that's the word. Yeah. So, it's, so it's how you how you respond to somebody. So for example, I don't know if you've been out and you go to pick up a wine glass at the same time, or maybe that's just my experience. Um, <laughs> so it's just that kind of you know, unconscious responsiveness. And again, it's not about being liked, it's just sort of having that, some people call it bond, some people call it connection. Um, and it's if you want to work with people, then it's, it's really effective. And that's through every walk of life. It makes such a massive, massive difference. Quick fire, who can give me some examples of building rapport? Breathing, yep. So what about breathing? At the same time, just getting to sync with each other. In, you know, yeah, kind of matching their breathing, yeah, exactly. Mirroring. Mirroring, mirroring yeah, lovely. Uh, Throw some more out. Micro movements. Micro muscle movements, yeah. Uh, do you want to explain that one? Really small yeah, so if someone's doing like a big grey, so if someone's doing like a big macro movement, and then it gradually just you can do a, a micro muscle movement. So it almost looks like you're not moving at all because that might be quite distracting if someone's doing that. They might think they've taken the Mickey out of me. Did you throw one out? Yeah, I exit. I exit some cues. Yeah, so it's being it's being aware of those. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Uh, so matching, mirroring, uh, sharing common experience. Yeah. Speed and your um, tonality and. When you're speaking, yeah. So matching their um, the you know, sort of the speed they speak at, and also their, their timbre or tonality. Or yeah, perfect. Yep, yeah, exactly. Yeah, lovely. And how can that be uh, useful if you don't have rapport with someone, or for example, you don't have rapport, or you're doing something like you're you're matching uh, the timbre and the tone of voice and the breathing. The yeah, that could be very helpful over the phone. Or if you're working somebody, say somebody comes in and they're very agitated, what would you be able to do in that situation? Pacing. Yeah, lovely, pacing and leading, exactly. So if you start being a certain way and you build rapport and then you start matching, mirroring certain things like their breathing, so if they are talking quite fast and you can kind of be talking at the same energy of them and then you gradually just start slowing that down and your breathing, 
maybe not that obviously but you, you know so you start you start pacing and then once you're in rapport with them and you've got that connection then you can start leading yep everyone happy with that one okay so they are the presuppositions of NLP so would does anybody have could be absolutely anything, doesn't have to be anything heavy, a sort of area or context that they're sort of working on at the moment, or just a general kind of, um, ha, Becky. Mm -hmm. Would you want to do yeah. that? Yeah, you don't, again, you don't have to share it with us when we do. Why you don't? Okay. All right. <laughs> so, yeah, please. So she's just asked you to do something on your CPS. No, no, yeah. just kidding. <laughs> yeah, well, there you go. She needs your help. Hi. Okay. Excellent. So, right, what we're going to do, so we're going to do this example as a spatial anchor. Okay. Okay? I think you may have seen this, I'm not sure, but I'm going to go through it just for the benefit of everyone so that then you can see different ways of, of using it. So, what we're going to do for this one is if you think about your context that you have, mm -hmm. okay, um, and you said there's a few different people within that. Okay, which is actually is very sort of useful. Well, it's kind of it's, it's, it's it's life, in general. Yeah, life in general. Okay, so we've got these 13, and some of them kind of overlap as we were going through. We yeah. see some overlap. So if you were to think about, let's do it this way. Excuse me, my back to you. You might find it easier to, to do it from here just for a moment. So if you were to look at these presuppositions, hmm. Are there five in particular that kind of jump out at you? Hello. Okay, that one. The system of the greatest flexibility of work. That's all right. Slow, slow, slow. So I'm going to pull them out as okay. you let me know them. So, okay, uh, that one. Okay, so this the system person with the greatest flexibility will, will control the system. <laughs> this is what it feels right uh, for you. That one. So behaviour is geared for adaptation. <clears throat> okay. Procedures should increase wholeness and choice. Okay, all procedures should increase wholeness and choice. Again, excuse me, everyone. That one is gone. People have all the ability they need. It's one more, isn't it? Yep. There's no failure in your feedback. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, so if you just want to read these out for me and make sure that you're happy okay. with these. There is no failure, only feedback. Mm -hmm. There are no resistant clients, only inflexible communicators, resistance to the lack. Well, that's not the one I put in. Is it not? But maybe it should be. <laughs> <laughs> there are resistance to the sign of the lack of. Oh, it was that one. Mm. Was it? Yeah. Ah, ah. Well, all procedures should increase okay, so wholeness well. and choice. Yeah, was People have all the ability they need. There are no unresourceful people, only unresourceful states. Mm -hmm. Behaviour is geared for adaptation. Current behaviour is the best current choice currently available. Okay. We don't have one, so that's one, one. Okay. two, three. Yeah, another set, that's fine. Oh, that's fine. one hiding there. Yeah. There you go, I'll just throw an extra one in for you. No suggestion or anything there. <laughs> okay. So if you were to think about... Um, let's just get a bit more space here. Guys, would you mind in the front row just getting a little bit cosy with people behind you, just moving back just a fraction, just to give a bit more room for yeah, Becky? Yeah, no, no, it's all right. Oh, just, yeah, that's that's fine, lovely. Okay. 
<laughs> sure she won't mind either. <laughs> okay, so if you want to pop those other okay. three down where you're happy. Steve will beep you out this time. Okay. <laughs> but we won't make him work too hard. <laughs> okay, so so if you just take a take a moment. Yep. Yeah. And think about this general context. You've got a specific context in mind mm -hmm. at the moment. Yeah. Okay, so whenever you're ready, what I'd like you to do is to step into whichever one you want. This is all completely up to you, down to you. Yeah. And whenever you're ready, just step into the presupposition and then just take that on board. Okay. Okay, so if you sort of look at look at it with that's an assumed truth and look at it from that perspective. Okay. Well we're gonna start this as number one. Step into it. Do you want to no, that's, that's fine. Yeah? Yeah. Okay, so you can come out. Yeah? Yeah. Okay? Yeah. Do we need to check that off? Oh, that oh, that's that's all right. Thanks for the Okay. So again, what you can do now is you can take the same context, mm. um, and it depends whether that situation within the context is exactly the same, mm. and you can step into the next presupposition, or within that whole relationship as a whole, you mm. can pick another context within it. Okay. Okay, so again, just take a moment to just connect to that. Yeah, no, they link quite nicely. This is basically, I'm doing the best I can at the moment. Okay. Um, with what I've got, but I'm focused on what I need to do, so. Okay. That's my current behaviour. Okay. And then and you're ready. That should help, all procedures should increase this. So all procedures should increase wholeness and choice. Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. So again, that's a nice smile. Again, when you're when you're ready. It's working, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you love it, okay. <laughs> okay, so when you're ready, again, it can be the same context or it can be yeah. in that whole field. And again, we're talking about okay. just taking the time yeah, to get okay. this is good. Okay. How are you going to be by the time you get to the end one? <laughs> okay. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Yep. 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 Okay, so that was people have all the ability they need, they're no unresourceful people, only unresourceful states. Yeah. Okay? I love that your state has actually changed from where <laughs> to that one. No, it's yeah, it's Okay. Yeah. okay. So again, you know the yeah. drill now. Yeah. So whenever you're ready, so it's the system or person with the greatest flexibility yeah. will. <laughs> Storming through them now. Yep. Yeah. It's really quick. But Be nice. careful with the front yeah. row when she gets there. When she gets the last one. Okay. And again, when you're ready, there's no failure, only feedback. But just take a moment, or not. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, just hit me a 
actually. Yeah. That's, that's cool. good. Do you want to? Yeah, and I'll just put on some yeah. that one again. <laughs> just take your time to really connect to it. That's just interesting. I've really just honed in on the word failure. And there is no failure. No failure. Not a failure. So just take the energy out of the failure. And just be back and be back. <coughs> yeah, just take a moment to take that on board. Yeah. Yeah. Do we shake any of that off? Are you quite happy being bouncy? No, I can't. I can't. I can't yeah. just keep it. Okay. okay. <laughs> Good luck with whoever's parked up with you. No, joking. <laughs> yeah, I'm on the bus. <laughs> Nobody goes my way. It's cool. <laughs> okay. So, thank you very much. That's a pleasure. Very formal. Shake yes. your hand. <laughs> um, can, you can I take a photo of them so that? Yeah. If I can stack them up the way they came out. Mm -hmm. Is that okay? Yeah, absolutely fine. So now. I'll let you do that then, so you know which order they're in. Yeah, yeah. I've got a big post on my, my work ring. Excellent. Shall we move them on? Yep, lovely, thank you. Okay. <laughs> okay, so you can see that's, so that's spatial anchoring. So that's using um, spatial anchors. So it's, it's sort of attaching um, something to a space. So when you sort of step in it and really kind of absorbing that and taking those learnings on. So that's quite a nice way of using the presuppositions. Again, because the presuppositions tend to be, people tend to go over them when you're talking, when you kind of learn and go through them. But it's actually really nice to be able to put them into a process and actually really make use of them, apart from them just being a general undercurrent, obviously, which underpin NLP. And welcome back. <laughs> okay, how did you guys find that? Empowering. Empowering. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. Do you want to elaborate on that? Or are you happy with empowering? <laughs> no, empowering is good. It's um, it's something that was a little bit too positive. I need they have toned down a few notches. Um, so now I've got the uh, I've got more tools than I had already. So Excellent. I can um, and I can make little action plans <laughs> for my notes. Oh, fantastic. Um, uh -huh. And I thought Shanaka did a really good job. Oh. <laughs> well done. <laughs> can you see how powerful these can be if you take these as assumed truths and you sort of use them throughout your life as well as working with people? Excellent. Then my work here is done. <laughs> so thank you all very much for coming out this evening. <laughs> and hope to see you next month. And now to the pub. <laughs> For networking. For networking. networking. <laughs> Otherwise I'll be edited out. <laughs>